I played Venture and I discovered some fun facts. Let's have a look. Venture Test Weekend is in full swing. Until Sunday, you can test the Season 10 DPS Hero in the game for yourself. Well, in all game modes except competitive, of course. Now, as soon as they unlocked, I jumped in the game and I gave them a try. And I have to say, it was a lot of fun. Throughout the stream, my chat had a lot of questions on how their abilities kind of interact with other heroes. So throughout this video, I'm going to answer those questions. And I also have a few uh, comments, but I'll keep those for the end of the video. First, let's have a look at your kit. I'm also going to give you some tips. And we're going to take a look on how they interact with the abilities of other heroes. Let's get started. All right, here we are in the practice range venture. Temporarily available for three days. That's all we need. So the main ability is the seismic shot that they do that explodes uh, after a short distance. It does a substantial amount of damage. Enough. Nothing too crazy. Now this is a very close range shot, so at this distance you'll do a substantial amount of damage. But once you go too far, you're not going to hit anything. I have to take a guess. I think it would be around 17 meters, 18 meters. See if I'm on top of 20. I'm not hitting anything. If I get a little closer, like around 17, you start seeing the damage again. So I think the distance is about 17 meters. And as I said earlier, it does do a little bit of splash damage. So if you position your shot between two targets, you'll hit them both just a tiny bit. Now, another important part of Venture's kit is their melee. It does a lot of damage. It's one of their passives. And once you see it in action, you'll understand why. Let me start out on the wall first. As you can see, it's not as much a punch as it really is a drill. And if you get to the full extent, I think it's about 70 damage. So that is substantial. Use it a lot. Because it's free. Another good way to damage your opponents is by using your right click. And that is the dash. So the dash pushes enemies backwards quite hard, actually, and it um, does a good amount of damage. I don't know what that bot is shooting at, to be honest, but anyways. But if you need to finish a target off that is trying to get away, that dash will do perfectly. Now, what that dash will also do is help you to get to higher ground, because, sure, you can dash forward, but you can also dash upwards. So that gives you a ton of mobility. You can get up to those high spots, start shooting around a little bit, wait till it goes off cooldown, and then easily bridge these kind of gaps. The mobility that you get out of this dash is just amazing. All right, but the most unique trait that this hero has is Burrow, where they go underground. Now, Burrow is the ability that I get most questions about, and it is pretty unique. It has a lot of nuance to it. Now, let me show you what Burrow does, just plain and simple. Push the button, this is a short animation, and for the next five seconds you'll be underground, at which point you pop up automatically, you'll do some damage. In this case it wasn't much, but this is the tank bot. And you'll push the enemy back. Depending on uh, how much forward movement you have, you'll bump them back, but in this case it was just up. Now what you also can do is, when you're burring, you can choose to bump up all by yourself. You don't need to wait the full five seconds to come up ground again, and that way you have more control over who you bump and where you bump them to. That gets a lot more interesting if you combine this with the space bar. So you burrow down, you hold the space bar, and you let go, and you basically will do a way higher jump, but you also do way more damage. Let me show you. That was a lot more damage, and that was a high jump. Now, as you can see, it is that same thing that we can see on uh, Batista's jump. I do have a bit of an issue with that specific combination or that ability, but I'll get back to that later in the video. All right, but this is where it gets interesting, right? You're burning down, you're jumping up, and then you follow with your dash and... That mobility that I was talking about earlier just got another upgrade. One thing you can do with that mobility is like you start burrowing down here, you jump down, you keep burrowing, and jump up. But there also are some limitations. For instance, this is one of the most asked questions I got. Can you burrow under a May wall? No, you cannot. Can you burrow yourself out of Manga's ultimate? 
You cannot. Can this ability be interrupted? It can, because there's this short time, this short animation at the start, and if you're quick enough, you can actually stop them from burrowing. Same goes for Sombra. Sombra can hack them out of their burrow. And the most important thing you need to keep in mind is that when you are buried, your supports cannot heal you. The only one that can reach you is Zenyatta by putting an orb on you before you burrow, and that orb will stick. But anything else will not hit you. Even Mercy's beam will break. On the other hand, you can totally avoid some abilities of other heroes like the traps for both Roadhog and Junkrat, and ultimates like D.Va or Mei not getting grabbed by Sigma. You just need to be quick enough and make sure you're underground before they hit. The one thing I think is very useful is that you can cleanse debuffs by just burrowing. Alright, and then there's the ultimate. Like tonic shock. Now how this works plain and simple. You hit your Excavation ultimate and you get four charges and a timer. And you can shoot off four charges of a shockwave within that time. Now the fun thing is that you can combine your abilities with your ultimate. So you can choose, set it off, burrow down, come up again, use your two final charges. Now you could also combine that with dash, whatever you want to do. Now contrary to your normal shot, this does have some range to it. I'm at 20 meters and... It does go pretty far. Like if I go past 20 meters, it's not working. So my guess is it's 20 meters on the dot. Now the ideal distance kind of depends on the situation. Just remember that there's a cone to it, as you can see. It's like a... Let's give it a 30 great angle to it. And the further away you go, the more spread you'll have at the end. But it will also make hitting your targets at the end a little more difficult. Because every little turn you make on your end will make a huge difference on where your shocks will end up. One thing you need to keep in mind is that it will not go through shields. It will destroy the shield eventually, but yeah, you need to work through the shield first. Talking about shields, you might have noticed as I was using my abilities that my health bar got this little blue mark at the end. And that is because every time you use your ability, adventure, any of your abilities, you'll add temporary shield to your health bar. Which I think is a pretty strong feature. Altogether, a fun hero. That's all of the parts. But as I always say, the practice range is not representative of the actual gameplay. But in a good and a bad sense, the complete picture outside of this test environment is very different. Let me start out with saying that when you start playing adventure out there, in the open, in the wild so to speak, you can feel the potential almost immediately. Kind of feels like when you're a kid and you're learning how to ride a bike. As soon as you step on that bike, you can feel the potential, how fast you'll be going in the end. But let's just start slow, shall we? It would be best if we don't fall over. Which is perfectly fine. Heroes like this are fun to learn, but they're even more fun to master. I kind of feel the same way about Doomfist, Echo, Life Weaver. Well, the old Life Weaver. Now, this learning process is all about finding the correct combos. Learning how you can get close enough to do the proper damage, using your melee quite often. And retreat in time so you can survive. In other words, dive. And there are plenty of ways of doing that. Venture might have not the biggest set of tools, but it is the combination of these tools that makes a difference. You can choose the combination depending on what situation you're in, and that gives you a lot of flexibility. Now, the better you learn to read your situation and the faster you learn to react to it, the better you'll be at Venture. Until you hit that master level, then you can get really creative. I'm looking forward to see what the high level players are going to do with this hero. That being said, there are a few things that might take a little longer to get used to, or that requires some help from Blizzard. Overall, Fenchers' rotation feels rather fluid, organic, fun, it's almost like dancing. It is this one moment when you come out of Burrow and you want to jump up, it just kind of stalls. At least for me personally, it might be a me issue, which they often are. It's just that thing where you need to hold your spacebar, like Batiste does. But then Batiste is not that same type of mobile fluid hero. What got me every single time is that I'm moving forward while using Burrow, and while I'm pushing that space bar, I tend to keep pushing forward. So they kind of launch forward as they get out of the ground. And then you hit the weirdest obstacles. Visually, it's kind of hard to tell if you're still moving forward at what velocity and what you're actually hitting. So it always kind of feels like something is wrong. The way to remedy that currently is to start moving forward and then hold the space bar. But yeah, that really disrupts the flow. I do think there's an element of practice in there where I need to learn when to start holding the space bar, when to start moving forward and when to release. 
on the other hand, I don't know if we need that holding spacebar thing. I think it might be easier to just hit the spacebar and to jump out. I don't need to dose the height at which I'll be jumping. I'll always want to jump as high as possible. Come on. And once you're out after hitting the spacebar, you can still decide to move forward. That's not the problem. But that might just be me. The second thing that I noticed is that the ultimate is not nearly as strong in the actual game as it is in the practice range. Yeah, that's partly due to the way it can be blocked, you can be interrupted, and you are always very vulnerable because you are so close to the enemy team. But it is also due to the fact that the effect on the floor is not super clear. It is kind of hard to track. You're not sure if you're kind of looking in the right direction, if you're hitting all the targets that you want to hit, especially among all the other stuff that is going on. And again, that might be because this hero is pretty new, and we need to get used to it. But I do think making it a little more readable would definitely help a lot. Look, I'm nitpicking here. Overall, for now, Venture is pretty good. And they are a lot of fun to play. I do think they might feel strong in some situations, but that is possibly due to the fact that everybody is still learning the hero. Not only the people that are playing them, but also the people that need to counter them. So that might level out over time. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments. For me, this could be the best hero release yet. And yeah, even better than the Yaris. But this is not a release. This is a test weekend. The actual release is coming on April 16th and it is looking very promising. However, for now, that was it. A huge thank you to my patrons. I could not make these videos without you guys. You have my eternal gratitude. Check out this video on some of the map reworks that we're getting in future seasons. Click it. But above all, take care of yourself, take care of each other. Bye bye.